Hello everyone, welcome to Wicked West Books. My name is Meg West and I have three disclaimers for this video before I can even get started on what I want to talk about. So let's do those as quickly as we possibly can. Number one, my goal here is not to insult anyone and I really don't want to accuse anyone of anything that's not actually going on. I am not here to claim that Sarah J Maas is writing fan fiction of the Black Jewel series, which on Anne Bishop's website is expressly forbidden because of copyright reasons. I am not here to say that. I would not be surprised, truly, honestly, if Sarah J Moss didn't realize exactly how much came from the Black Jewel series that I have found in her books, but this is a list of things that I see that are the same, or at least very very similar between them. Number two, spoilers. Spoilers ahead, so tread carefully. I am going to try my hardest not to do really big spoilers, not full plotline spoilers, but there will be some character traits and some things that maybe you don't find out until later on in the series for both the Akatar series and for the Black Jewels series that might spoil some things for you, so just be aware of that. The only big spoiler I might give away is in the Throne of Glass series, and it's not until the book Queen of Shadows. I'm pretty sure that's when this information comes out, so if you've read past that, then you should be okay with the spoilers on that. And number three, I'm not entirely sure that this video needs it so much. I will be talking about the subject minorly, but definitely for the Black Jewel series, there is a very large trigger warning for rape in this series, and I will be talking about it a little bit in this video because it's one of the things that's the same on both sides. Alright, so let's get into it. I have a two-page list of things that I have found mostly while reading the Akatar series that are things that I remember from the Black Jewels series, and I'm just going to kind of go through them. Some of them are going to be very, very small. For instance, in the Akatar series, you have something called winnowing, where you tr disappear from one place and appear in another. In the Black Jewels series, there is something going on called riding the winds, and in this series, there is basically, it looks like a spider web covering the world, and you can travel down the lines of the spider web, like there are ley lines of power to get from one place to another. The more powerful you are, the farther you can go in less time, which is kind of the same with the winnowing, different ways of doing it, but it's not something that's specific to these books because that's just operating in Harry Potter. So again, not specific to either one, or, you know, they're not the only things being borrowed in these books, but it's one of the ones that just kind of adds on top of it. The first similarity that I ever read was actually from Throne of Glass, and, and it's also the first book in the Black Jewel series, Daughter of the Blood, where one of the main characters, the main character, one of the main characters, ends up in a mine as a form of punishment and control, Killing them outright gets rid of an asset that you can use later in the plot line, that you can use later in their own lives. So they don't want to kill this character, they just want to torture them back into submission. And that's exactly what they do to Selena when they put her in the salt, salt mine of, I think it's called Endover. And in the Black Jewel series, they put Lucifer Yaslana in a salt mine. It was the first one that I noticed and it happened right off the bat. Another real small one is that High Lord is used in both of them. In the Akatar series, it's a reference to all of the leaders from all of the different courts. In the Black Jewels series, it's only a reference to one man and um, it's kind of opposites on this in that and that Feyre gets the on, is the only woman to get the title of High Lady. This man who is called the High Lord in this series is the only male to get the title of High Lord in the series. It's a little bit opposite and the same phrase, and again, it's a small one, but it's there. One that's kind of a constant both throughout this series and throughout this series is that Recent is constantly putting his hands in his pockets. It was one of the very, it was one of the things that was very, very distracting in Wings and Ruin is how often his hands were in his pockets. And um, in the Black Jewel series, Damon saw Diablo, one of the main characters. He's constantly slipping his hands in his pockets. Uh, he wants to hide them for a specific reason, and it doesn't say that Recent wants to do that, but I have a feeling that's why they're in his pockets a lot is when he's trying to hide something. Another thing that 
Damon and Reese have in common is that they put on a very cold and cruel mask whenever they are dealing with someone that they don't like. If they can trust them even a little bit, they don't necessarily show that face, but it is the face that they put on when they're going into whatever type of battle it is that they're going into. Now this is referring to a slightly different character in the Akatar series than in Black Jewel series, but in the Black Jewel series, Damon is constantly referred to in a very specific phrase silky court trained liar and not only is it repeated several times during the series i've read the series several times so it's one that i just know by heart so when i was reading wings and ruin and i got this line liar clever trained liar it just struck a chord as being a very very similar line and a very very similar thought in the black jewel series when janelle finally forms her court that is based around her and her leadership and she sets the tone for everything that goes on inside her court it is the dark court and in the akatar series the main one that you join into is the night court so just a little bit of similarities there. And in addition to that, on a very similar note, the Black Jewel series is based around darkness equaling power. The darker the power, the stronger the power is, and it has absolutely nothing to do with good or evil. You can be one of the most powerful people in existence and have the darkest form of power but you're still one of the people who is fighting for everyone else's rights and to end any kind of torture and anything that's gone on in this book. And in addition, the Night Court puts on a face of terror and horror, but really it's doing that to show that it's got the most peaceful areas in the entirety of the land. And it's just, they're both ways that are showing that just because it's dark does not necessarily mean that it's evil. And another similarity between the courts is that when they are their own little group, it functions more like a family than it functions on the protocol and everything that's necessary to show the outside world that they are a strong force to be dealt with. However, when they need to call on that protocol to show the world that they are a force to be reckoned with, they can slip into that and do that just as easily as they can do the family dynamic. Another small one that I'm not sure the power is contained directly to recent, but we see recent opening up basically a portable pocket dimension, a cabinet that he puts things in to keep it, and there was a comment about why don't you just get in there and he says because there's no air in this little pocket dimension the very same thing also happens in the black jewel series every single person in the black jewel series has their own little pocket dimension the more powerful they are the bigger the pocket and the more things that they can hold in there but it is a very common thing to happen in black jewel series and it is something that at least occurs once in the akatar series there is also the mind-to-mind -mind communication. In this series, it happens mostly just between Reese and Feyre that we can see. We assume that it happens between Reese and the others. In this one, pretty much anyone can talk to anyone, and in both of them, they put up shields around their mind that you can let someone else into if you want to, but you don't have to. In the Akatar series, the main land that the Fey live on is called Prithian, and one of the evil characters, one of the bad characters, one of the bad influences from the Black Jewel series is a character named Prithian. It's the same name and it disturbs me that the land is named after someone who is such an evil, evil character. Both book series have a red-headed character as an evil bitch character. In the Akatar series you of course have Amarantha who, you know, tortures people, kills people, and just does whatever the hell she wants to get her own way. And in the Black Jewel series, that character's name is Hecata. We find out some of her backstory, but she is basically just an absolutely horrible, horrible woman who only had kids to use them as blackmail against her husband. And she did a lot of the same bad, evil things that Amarantha did, only she did a little bit more of what King Hybern did in pulling the strings around instead of doing the actual dirty work herself. Beast forms. In this series, there is, of course, Recent who has a beast form. You find out during the final battle that a few more do, and you know that Reese does not like this beast form. He thinks that it will take him over. 
Janelle, the main character from the Black Jewel series, also has a beast form that is not exactly human. However, she identifies more with that than she does with her human body and sees this beast form as her true self just encased in human flesh. And uh, she makes sure that she wants someone who can deal with the beast form of herself and love that beast form as well as the outside casings that she has and they both have the forms, they just have different ways of looking at them. And on kind of the same point as that, both Janelle, Damon, the High Lord character, and Lucifer, and basically every single character in this book wants to be judged by themselves, by their own self-worth, and not by whatever power levels they have, because when you look at it, Damon and Lucifer are two of the absolute strongest men in existence in the entirety of the world. Janelle, the main character, outpowers them and pretty much everyone else in existence altogether just by herself. You have the High Lord character who is almost, almost as powerful as Damien, a lot stronger than Lucifer, and they just, they are very, very strong people and they can do a lot of harm with that power if they choose to. They just choose not to and they want to be judged by that more than being judged by the power that they do have. In addition to that, Reason really, really likes Feyre and really falls in love with her because she does not judge him by the power, she judges him by who he is and she sees behind the mask of the power and loves him anyway. And that's one of the things that is on both sides, but that's kind of also just just natural behavior to want to be loved for yourself instead of something the way you look or where you're born or things like that. In both of them, you have very, very powerful people who can do a lot of stuff to fix the world and the harm that's been done. Both series, they wait for a girl character to do it. In Akatar, of course, they have to wait for Feyre to lift Tamlin's curse and then from there they depend on her quite a bit throughout the series to do things She doesn't have to do it all by herself But a lot of it is by herself that she has to do and in the black jewel series Lucifer and Damon and and the high lord character they wait for 1700 years for Janelle to show up to fix everything and she does most of the work they help her out some they are her background they keep her grounded and you know do all of the things that family's supposed to do but in both cases they had the power to help themselves but they waited for the girl the chosen one to come along and help them help themselves basically in both of these series the men were used against themselves to protect other people in the Akatar series Rhys spends 50 years being Amarantha's whore and basically what he did was whore himself out so that no one would look and see exactly what it was that he was protecting he protected his people with the only thing he had his body and of course that is definitely rape and on this side it's basically the same thing except that Damien and Lucifer had to go through it for 1700 years not just 50 years and they actually did it for so long and did all so much that they actually had a title of pleasure slave that's exactly what they were they were whores that were owned by women and were sold to the highest bidder or were given to people who impressed whoever was holding the leash at the moment and if one of them escaped, Damon escapes, they always said okay you can have a few days of freedom but if you're not back by a certain time we will kill your brother Lucifer. So they knew that they were whoring themselves for a reason to protect each other but they still were being used very, very viciously for a very long time, both cases. Now, in the Black Jewels series, the way magic works is that you are assigned a colored jewel. Uh, you have a birth color, and then you make an offering to the darkness, and you can come back with a darker, more powerful jewel. Depending on where it is on this list shows just how powerful you are. The darker the color, closer to the bottom, the more powerful you are, and the closer to the top, the less power you have, the less things you can do. You notice that on this list there is a sapphire jewel and there is a red jewel color. The very same colors that Azriel and Cassian wear in their siphons, which they use to control their power because they have too much to control it without the siphons. And 
They're colors that coincide and in addition to the fact that you're using these jewels to control magic, which is what this entire series is, when Janelle gets her birthright jewels, she is given more than anyone else. In this series, you're given a jewel that can be put into a pendant and one that can be put into a ring, and that's it. That's all you get. Janelle comes out with like 24, some ridiculous number, I don't remember exactly what it is, jewels of each and every color. She has so many jewels, more than anyone else, and then when she makes her offering to the darkness, she actually gets a jewel that's darker than the black. She gets the ebon. When you look at Cassian and Azriel, they have seven siphons when the usual amount for the Illyrians to use is one per warrior. So, you know, that kind of goes along. This is, this is the one that people who have read the Dark Jewels series have been waiting for. In Akatar, you have the Illyrians. They are a warrior race. They have bat wings. They use the Illyrian blade to fight with. They refuse their women any right to fight, and they even clip the wings of the females so that they cannot fly anymore. In the Black Jewel series, you have the Yurians. Very similar word, very similar spelling, and guess what they are? They are a warrior race. They are winged. They use a war blade. They absolutely refuse their females the right to fight. What else do these two races have in common? They would both absolutely rather die than lose their wings. In fact, Lucifer Yaslana has said in the books that he would rather lose his balls than his wings. And uh, on that same note, uh, with the women not fighting on either side, in the Akatar series, Rhys, Cassian, and Azriel have fought to get the warlords basically to chain to train the women into being able to fight. And in this series, Lucifer doesn't really have the power to make all of the other warlords train the women to fight, but any woman he personally can train to fight, he is more than happy to teach them how to defend themselves. And on that same kind of training to fight thing, Lucifer Yaslana gets Janelle out of one of her depressions because of a rape that happened to her. She stops caring about her body and just wants to kind of wither away because if maybe she looks terrible, men won't be interested in her anymore. To get her out of that depression, he pushes her, he annoys her, he bugs her until she is so mad that she starts hitting him with a staff and just starts punching him and does everything she can to get riled up like that. And that is the same thing that you see Reese doing throughout the entire Court of Mist and Fury book because she's been in a depression for good reason. She, you know, killed people that she didn't want to kill and was treated absolutely horribly afterwards. But the way that Reese gets her out of that depression is to just bug the shit out of her until she fights back and realizes her own self-worth from that. And that's one of the things that they kind of have in common. Now for specific character, kind of, they're the same person going back and forth. Um, one of the closest ones, if you want to see pictures, you have, of course, Lucifer Yaslana, the Iyurian warlord prince, and his amazingness, and you can compare him, I think, most to Cassian. They have very, very similar personalities on fighting, having hot tempers and really going at it, and so there's that similarity crossover. One that I have found is Amrin and Draca. Draca is a dragon trapped in human form. She gave up that dragon form many, many years ago when it was time for the dragons to stop ruling the world, so now she is human, and often Amrin is described as a fire drake in human form, so that was one that was very, very similar to me and their personalities are basically the same thing. Draca might be just a little bit nicer than Amran, but they're still very, very well the same. I also drew a parallel between Elaine and Tersa. Tersa is a witch from this series, and she was absolutely driven insane. Part of that insanity comes with seeing the future. When Elaine gets her powers in 
aqua war it's seeing the future and she thinks that she's going insane so there's that similarity there on a slightly lesser scale you have briaxis and lorne lorne is draca's husband he did not give up the dragon form he stayed the dragon form and he is buried at the very very bottom of the mountain that holds the library and it's kind of like briaxis they look nothing alike they act nothing alike but the fact that their homes are at the bottom of a mountain that holds a library was a similarity. Then there is Yanthi and Dorothea. Um, they are both high priestesses, they are both absolute bitches, and they both like to rape men. Aren't they just charming characters? They have completely different appearances, but their behavior, their attitudes, their I'm so much greater than you bow down to me attitude is exactly the same. And as far as the character parallels go, the biggest one that I have seen is actually between Surreal from the Black Jewel series and Selena from the Throne of Glass series. They are both assassins. They are both female. They will use those feminine wiles to get close to the enemy and kill them. Surreal will get closer because she's also a paid whore and Selena isn't, although she does have a friend who is. But the thing that really gets me is that Surreal is half short-lived race, half long-lived race. So while she looks mostly human, if you look too closely, so you can tell that she's not entirely human, which you find out during the end of the series that Selena is not really Selena, she's also Aelin, and she is part of a long-lived race, so she's also got those pointy ears to go along with her assassin abilities, and it was just a very, very similar character between the two of them. And yeah, those are those are the similarities. That's two pages of similarities that I'm sure there's more. I'm sure that I missed things. I did not do a reread of any of the Black Jewels series before making this video. I really should have reread and read further in the Throne of Glass series because I think I missed a couple of connections there. I'm fairly certain that the phrase Tangled Webs is used in Throne of Glass series, which is a very big part of the Black Jewel series, but I don't remember specifically if it was or wasn't. It could have been in my memory, in, in my imagination, but Again, I have plenty of similarities to make up for the one or two that I may have missed from the Throne of Glass series. So yeah, that's that's what I got. <laughs> if you have read both series and have an opinion on just how much Sarah J Maas may have borrowed, or if you can think of something right offhand that I may have missed, please comment down below because I would love to know if you have any arguments against any of these. Again, I would love to hear them. Comment them down below. That's all I really have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. I post videos every Thursday or else I lose books. Thank you guys for watching. Have a wicked day.